Okay, let me jump right into this craft functional because I filmed this, this segment already and I'm going to film it again. You guys could just watch and follow along with me. These are, once again, simple, easy. I'm going to call them mixed media. Perhaps they don't qualify for mixed media. If you guys caught my last craft functional video, I shared, actually, let me share this one now because um, when I shared this particular tag i had this bottom part but i didn't have these beads that spelled out jesus i have since gotten my beads in from aliexpress so i added jesus but to me these definitely feel and look like mixed media these are a bit more simple and refined but you know to me they have that mixed media flair but anyway let me go ahead and get started i i have to get into this craft functional you guys we are definitely living in the last days there's a scripture and i don't have that scripture right now but it talks about um what's the word perilous times in the last days and I have a tragic story to share, but this is the Rolodex Yesteryear Sizzix die that I used. I already cut out my, my shapes, but I'm going to send it through again because I'm adding washi tape after the fact. And this is Amity Bloom's washi tape. It's no longer available. I just popped it open like for this video. So I'm using it. I used it on this one, but I'm really using it for the first time. Anyway, last night we were watching the NBA final game, which Curry's, I forget the name of the team, Curry's team won, which my husband was elated. But at the onset of watching that game, I I was on our news website earlier yesterday. I'd seen a headlines, a tragic story of a father who murdered his own son. People, these are the last days. But see, there are some scriptures that talks about the family being divided and family members turning against one another and how love will wax cold so um i showed my husband i showed him the pictures and i asked him i said do you do you recognize do you know these individuals because it's from our hometown and he looked at the perpetrator which is or was the father and he said he looks familiar but he couldn't put his finger on it. And then he asked me, he said, well, what's the name? And when I gave him the name, my husband went into immediate shock. He froze and, you know, he just started to say he, like, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. When he calmed down, he told me that he knew the father. They're the same age. They actually went to high school together. He ran into the father at a a business like event a couple months ago. They hadn't seen each other in years, but they chopped it up for about a half an hour, exchanged phone numbers, talked about getting it together in the future. But now he he reads this article of um, you know, a father who who murdered or killed his own son. Now, we don't have any details. The only details that was in the article, and you can't believe everything you read in the news, but it was reported that a dispute broke out over a dispute over like how to discipline a child. Now, this father, he was maybe 50, 51 years old, and his son was in his early 30s. So I don't know if the son had a child. I don't, the article only stated they argued over discipline. 
Lord, I need thee. These tags, you guys, are inspired because whether or not you know it, you need the Lord too. I know I need the Lord. The days we are living in, once again, let me go ahead and, and read some scriptures. You guys, you need to get out your Bibles and read them, right? But uh, Mark 13 and 12 states, and brother will deliver brother over to death and the father his child and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. Matthew 10 and 21 and 22 states, brother will betray brother. Wait, brother will betray brother to death and a father his child. Children will rise against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of my name, but the one who perseveres to the end will be saved. So these two scriptures are, are talking about a time when um, even within one's own household, you have some that believe in Jesus and some that don't and how they will portray one, one another. But I'm bringing these scriptures up because the Bible and I'm going to read other scriptures too. They talk about a time and well, they talk about a time when the family unit breaks down, when the love wax cold, even between a father and his son. Now we don't know what happened. We don't know what factors played a part, but I think we all can agree. It's senseless and it's tragic. To think that a father would kill his own child. You know, we're, we're talking about, um, it's all these debates on having guns and things like that. In a case like this, I wonder if the father didn't have a gun. I wonder if his child would still be alive. Right. But that's another whole story. I'm not trying to debate guns and things like that, but it appeared that it led to a senseless death. Once again, don't know the circumstances, don't know if it was self-defense. What I do know is the young man, he was in the education field. Yeah, he appeared to be a, you know, an outstanding individual. What could cause a father to become so angry, right? That he pulls a weapon and he fires that weapon on his own flesh and blood, on his air. What could cause a father to do that? My husband, he couldn't continue to watch the game. And he started to pray to himself, Lord, don't, don't let me have a, a aneurysm. He just felt the blood boiling in his head. And I said, you need to pray. So we paused for the cause and he prayed and then I prayed. And I'm going to share, you know, one or two things that I prayed about. Because when we hear about tragic things that happens, what? you shouldn't do is shake your head and pass judgment and not think that it could also happen to you because that very well could happen to any one of us in our family. There's a scripture that states, and it is found, let's see here, Ephesians 4 and 26. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Now we're supposed to have a, a righteous anger. We're supposed to get angry at things. So this scripture is not talking about not being angry at things you should be angry about. But it states, do not sin in your anger. This father obviously sinned by killing his own flesh and blood. He sinned in his anger by murdering his son, as far as what we know so far, okay? 
There's another scripture that states, and I love this one, and you guys pay close attention to this one. Psalms 4 and 4. Be angry, yet do not sin. On your bed, search your heart and be still. In this life, we are going to feel the passion of anger, right? And if truth be told, a lot of us should have spent time in jail, right? Should have been arrested for domestic violence, man or female, because we've said some things, we've done some things that was worthy of legal punishment. But praise the Lord. Somehow we escaped it. But I like to think that at some point in our lives, we have been overwhelmed with a sense of anger and that passion. And anything could have happened in that spare of the moment, which is why we shouldn't pass judgment on this situation. We should seek to learn what we can learn from it. But one thing that I prayed about, in addition to making sure I did not pass judgment, now I'm going to go ahead and stamp you all. And I'm using this stamp, which I will have linked below. I love it. It's of this African-American woman praying because, Lord, I need thee. No, I don't want to stamp you. hear about tragedy, hopefully it will cause you to reflect. Because we should not only learn from our own mistakes, but the mistakes of others. And as my husband and I, as we pray, you know, I, I'd mention if they really argued over how to discipline a child, people, isn't that trivial, but isn't it something, especially if you are older, if you're a grandparent, you probably had debates with your own children about how they discipline their child. And if this father and his son really debated and argued over discipline and it led to a young man's demise isn't that trivial but isn't that common there's a scripture that states it just takes a little bit of yeast to to leaven up the whole lump if you bake bread like i do you put a little bit of yeast in there and it makes the dough rise triple quadruple rise how did a little bitty debate that many of us have found ourselves in or sim similar debates how did it lead to murder and the murder of your own child i'm going back to this scripture do not let the sun go down while you are angry you know i wonder if this father if he was he had some issues harboring in his heart about his son already. Something had to be there to make him pull out a gun and argue or, or murder or kill his own child. See, we have to deal with the seed of issues that causes us to be angry. I'm going to read another scripture after I go ahead and, oh, no, before I sprayed, I added, some chalk ink. I hadn't played with my chalk ink in a long time. So this is what I did. And this one seems to be kind of dry. But I just added added some ink like that. And I don't I don't need to pat this down because it's pretty dry already. And then what I'm going to do is just spray. Ooh, and even that's too much. <laughs> I didn't want to spray that much. I'm going to let that sit for a second. And we are going to then work on this one. So let's do the same thing. But it's very important that we deal with seeds and root issues. We don't want feelings that makes us or potentially could make us angry. We don't want it to fester and we have to deal with it before it gets out of hand, which is why this scripture once again states, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. If you are falling asleep, angry, it's just going to fester. Those thoughts are going to become strongholds in your heart. 
It's going to, those thoughts will produce feelings of stronghold and you're going to wake up, um, meditating on what you're angry about. It's going to fuel your emotions and eventually it can come out as rage. Eventually it can come out hurting someone or killing someone. Let me go. Well, let's spray this and then I'm going to read a couple more scriptures and let's see if this could make make some sense if it don't make sense already well first of all james 1 and 20 states for man's anger does not bring about the righteousness that god that god deserves when we are unrighteously angry it will only produce deeds of darkness deeds of the enemy like murder Let's look at what Jesus, well, before I read what Jesus stated, let's look at what Proverbs 4 and 23 states. Now the word, you guys, it's medicine for our souls. If we follow it, it leads to life, not just eternal life, but it keeps us from doing what, what this father did. Because whether or not you know it, none of us are above reproach. It can happen to any one of us. It can happen in our family. Just keep living. Or somebody you know, it can, and it will touch close to home. But Proverbs 4 and 23 states, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. You're supposed to guard your heart. You're supposed to keep unrighteous anger from settling in your heart. And you do that by not allowing yourself to fall asleep on that anger. You take it to the Lord in prayer. If you need to see a counselor, if you need to talk to someone, you confess those thoughts, those feelings, and, and not allow it to overwhelm you or consume you. And that's how you prevent from what happened to this young man, what this father did. That's one way of of preventing those tragic, senseless acts that cannot be undone. Now, Jesus goes on to say, or went on to say in Mark chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. Heed these words, you all. From within, out of the heart of man, comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, Murder, I'll say it again, murder, adultery, convetuousness, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and they defile a person. Out of the heart, if you don't protect and guard your heart, because the heart, there's another scripture that states it's utterly wicked. It's dark, people. All of us got dark hearts. We were born into sin, and by nature, we're filthy, nasty, duddy, bloody, stinky rags. Thank God for being washed in the blood of Jesus, right? Because <laughs> he cleanses us with forgiveness. But outside of that, y'all, we stink, we are evil, and our hearts are not, look, if the circumstances are right, hmm. If there's a perfect storm, you don't know what acts of darkness that you might find yourself in, right? If if all the elements are aligned at the appropriate time, you just don't know, which is why you can't judge. But if you allow the sun to go down on your anger, Jesus states, What's going to come out your heart is murder because that's where it comes out of. It comes out of the heart, which represents the issues of life. And if you got anger, unrighteous anger in you, it's going to come out one way or the other. Okay. Are these dry yet? Okay. I don't know. I might have a little bit of too much going on. Let's see. Do it make sense to you all? So we ought to be assessing when you hear about something as tragic as this, 
you ought to reflect and take a look at your own relationships if you have children with them, with your spouse, right? Do you bicker? Do you find yourself in stupid debates? And the next time you find yourself in a just unnecessary quarrel, pay attention to how easy it is to get roused up and feel passion and start to yell. Then you'll know just how human you are and just how quick things can get out of hand. Okay, let's go ahead. And I used Memento ink. I'm not going for perfection, but I definitely want the part of the image that shows she's praying. Now, for this one here, I added, I gave her some hair. <laughs> and I don't know if I like that, but anyway, I, I used something that's, I think it's discontinued now. And what is this stuff called? I forget the name of it. But anyway, it comes in different colors and it's very fine, very fine. So this, I'm not really, I mean, it is what it is. Okay, let's add some color to her hair like I did here. I kind of prefer the cleaner look. But once again, it is what it is. It's fine. So after, after we prayed, my husband felt a whole lot better. He went on to enjoy, enjoy the game. And today, he actually called someone that also knows the father. And they're supposed to meet up today and grieve together. Of course, when I prayed, I had to pray for that mother, that grandmother, the grandfather, you know, siblings, the students, the community, the family lost a loved one. The students lost, you know, um, I, I don't recall what position he was in, but the school community lost someone, the community lost, and for what? over a dispute people it's not worth it but if you do have a gun in your family I, I hope it's locked up I hope it's not too easy to get to because unfortunately you guys get the point how my tags look thus far I'm gonna finish up these two I'm gonna add some more elements I don't know what I'm gonna add but to give a close-up and to come back to a scripture, because I did, I edit my videos and I mentioned James 1 and 20. No, actually Psalms 4 and 4. And it states, be angry, yet do not sin on your bed. Search your heart and be still. I started talking about something else. And I just want to come back to that one. Because once again, it's referring to do not be angry. Do not be unrighteously angry. Do not sin. When you're in your bed, you need to search your heart and be still. You need to reflect upon that anger. You need to take it to God. You need to confess it. Once again, if you need to get counseling, if you need to confide in someone, do that. The word of God is our instruction for living and living our best lives. And when you harbor unrighteous anger, it's going to come out in some way, fashion, or form. You're going to say something that you will regret. You're going to do something. You may not murder someone physically, but you can murder someone with your tongue. You can murder someone's character. You can still make costly um, choices. Or you can, you can do things that's irreparable in your anger. So... It behooves to take heed to scripture. You want to search yourselves. We should be in a continual place of reflection, self-examination, and searching ourselves. Never think, you know, you're above what we experience as humans in life. Never think it can, you know, it can't happen to you or your own. Let me tell you people, you just keep living. Keep there. The devil is real. 
And as long as he is real, we are going to hear about, continue to hear about mass shootings of innocent people, of all types of people, of children. We're going to continue to hear about deeds of evilness, deeds of darkness, all the way down into our own homes. Because the devil is real. His demons are real. He has come to kill, steal, and destroy. He has come to wreak havoc. He has come to sow discord. He has come to sow confusion. And what the father did to his son describes all of that. I'm not blaming the devil for this, but ultimately he, he is the blame. People, we need the word of God. We need to reflect. We need to be honest with about our humanity. It is okay to be honest. There is no, um, and I'm thinking, I can't think of that scripture, but um, God loves you just as you are, human and all, mistakes and all. You can, you can safely confide in God. He will not judge you. Don't let the devil keep you from repenting, keep you from confessing your anger or whatever else it might be. It might be unforgiveness. It might be um, bitterness, whatever it is. It might be jealousy. You see, all these things can lead to hurting someone, if not killing someone. We are human and we are going to experience human feelings, situations, and emotions. But when you recognize it, Get help. Take it to the Lord. Take it to a counselor. Confide in a friend. Acknowledge your humanity. And before I forget, I'm going to put this right here. And I'm also going to put this, put this right here because I once again used my brother P-Touch. I have a lot of tutorials. People, you can use this in your crafting, not just to label things, but create clear stickers. And I printed these out. And I've had this Rolodex for forever. I have several, several this size and others in different sizes. And look, the Sizzix die. The Rolodex fits perfectly here. And I will journal on the bag. Once again, these, these Rolodex cards were inspired by the tragedy that took place. And because I know the devil is real... And I know what he's all about, people. You are not off limits. It can happen, if not in your direct family, your extended family, to your neighbor. It may not touch home, but it'll touch close to home. Don't be surprised. We have to stay prayed up. We have to stay in our word, but we have to live in a continual state of repentance, self-reflection, we have to live in a continual state of, of self-examination, like the scripture states. Be angry. Do not sin on your bed. Search your heart and be still. Because if we don't, and if we allow the sun to go down on our anger, we very well may wake up as a potential murderer. Get help now. Seek the Lord now. And I, that scripture I want to think of is right there and I cannot think of it. There's no condemnation in Christ. That's what it is. There's no condemnation in Christ. There's no con condemnation in feeling human. Because in this life, we are going to experience a plethora of different feelings and emotions. And many of them are unrighteous. Many are ungodly. But we have to recognize it and we can't continue to live in it. That's the difference. This father let the son go down on his anger. And it caused him to go get his gun if he didn't already have it on him. Load his gun if it wasn't already loaded. Walk back to where his son was if his son wasn't already right there. Lift that gun up and point it at his own flesh and blood, his heir at his chest and pull the trigger. And I hear it takes, it takes some power to pull a trigger. And now his son is no more. And this man is possibly, well, his life is over as he knew it. 
it's over as he knew it. Whether or not he stays in jail, he got to live with the guilt of taking his own child's life, people. But it's preventable. It didn't have to happen. It did not have to happen. Let's learn not only from our mistakes, but from the tragic mistakes of others. Let's let's get something good out of this. It got us talking. Let it have us repenting. Let it have us confessing. Let it have us reexamining our relationships with those in our family. Let it cause us to, to deal with issues, with root issues. Let it make us better people. Now, if you have found this video beneficial, helpful, if you've learned principles, if you've been enlightened with scripture, why not give it a thumbs up? Why not share it, right? Why not share the good news? Why not subscribe if you haven't done so? I will have links to this below. Why not check out a link? This is a fabulous tool, you guys. You're going to see a whole lot more things, creations made with this, with this wonderful little machine here. But why not leave... Why not leave a comment and why not come back if Lord willing? Because I do have more in store for you all. All right. I want to thank you all for watching as always. Blessings.